Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Korean Barbecue Beef Bulgogi. So beef bulgogi is an incredibly flavorful Korean barbecue dish. It's actually very similar to kalbi, those Korean beef short ribs that you've probably seen, the cross cut with the bones in. But instead of the short rib today, we'll be using ribeye sliced really thin. Now all of the magic in both of these dishes happens in the marinade, so that's where we're going to start. Now some of the predominant flavors in this marinade are going to be onion, garlic, some soy sauce, uh, but we're also going to be using these Korean pears. Now, I definitely like to use these when we're doing our short ribs or kalbi, but when it comes to the bulgogi, they're not quite as necessary because what they're really doing here is tenderizing, and that ribeye is going to be a little bit more tender. But that said, I really like the flavor. I like what it does to help break down the meat, so I'm including it in the marinade for our bulgogi today. We're just going to need about two cups of this pear diced up. Now all of this is gonna come together in the blender. We'll blitz it down and soak our steak, our thin sliced ribeye in the liquid. Next we've got one large yellow onion. We'll just do a rough dice on it really. Don't even need to be too careful about it. And then we've got our garlic. Six good sized cloves. Just gonna crush them, peel that skin off, and throw them in whole. And then we've got some ginger, which is a nice accent flavor. I'm just gonna peel off some of this skin. Take about a one inch section from this ginger root. And again, it's gonna go into the blender so we don't really have to worry about how much we're chopping or mincing. We'll just take it down into some smaller pieces to make it easier to break down. Now for the liquids, we've got a half cup of soy sauce. We're doing a half cup of smoked turbinado sugar. Uh, I like it for the smokiness. Still got some of that molasses in it. You could substitute this for brown sugar, but I like the flavors here. We get a quarter cup of mirin, two tablespoons of sesame oil, another big flavor in there. And then this is totally optional, but I'm gonna add a little bit of heat with uh, some mango hot sauce from Heat Mavericks. But one thing is not optional is we need some black pepper. The fresher it is, the better. So go ahead and crack it right here in the moment. Looking for about one teaspoon total. Now you can optionally thin this out with a little water if you want it thinner. Uh, some people like to add soda like Coca-Cola or even 7-Up to sweeten it up. Um, we're just gonna go with it raw, just the way it is, just like that. It's gonna have a nice texture and fully coat the beef. Oh yeah. Ooh, it's sweet, it's fruity. It's got that garlic that almost has a little spice to it. And the soy sauce and the sesame, those are coming through big time. That's delicious. All right, so let's set this aside and slice up our ribeyes. So we've got about three pounds here of really nice prime Creekstone Farms ribeyes. Uh, they've been hanging out in the freezer for about 20 minutes so that they can firm up just a little bit. They're really cold, but they're not frozen. So what I'm gonna do is kind of come in here at an angle. And we're just gonna slice really thin strips out of these steaks. So I've got pieces that are just like all hard fat. I might go ahead and discard those. I mean, that fat in the middle is good, but just so that we're not chewing on just a fat piece, because there's plenty of fat surrounding the meat and running through the meat for that matter. So this is all gonna go into a brine bucket to marinate. And your marination time I mean, it's kind of up to you. Uh, if I was gonna serve this for dinner, I might go ahead and make my marinade the night before and throw this all in the fridge when I leave in the morning for work. So it could sit a good four or six hours. Um, but even if you just get a couple hours on it, I mean, it's gonna absolutely fully penetrate these thin slices of beef. Lock it in and throw it in the fridge. So we're also gonna need some green onions for this project. 
the green parts, the tops, those are going to be kind of a garnish at the end. And then the whites and the light green sections will cook alongside the beef on the griddle today. So I'm just going to split these and dice them up so we can distribute them throughout the beef as it's cooking. The green onions will do real thin, the tops I should say, will do real thin on a steep bias just because it looks pretty on the plate. Well, we're ready to cook off our beef bulgogi, and today we're doing that on our Le Griddle Teppanyaki Grill. Now, this has been preheating for the last 20 to 30 minutes just to make sure that our cooking surface is plenty hot. So first, we're gonna get down some oil on our cooking surface. Uh, we're actually using duck fat today. You could use oil, you could use some uh, tallow if you like. Just something to make sure you've got a little layer of fat. Now, the bulgogi is gonna come right out of the marinade and onto the griddle. You want to spread this out so that it's mostly in one layer. That way we get some really nice coloration on the outside. Now this is going to cook through super fast. I mean, it's going to be well done by the time it comes off. But that's fine because it's got all of that extra moisture and tenderization that came from the marination process. We'll go ahead and throw on the whites and light green parts of the green onions as well. And then we're just going to be flipping this stuff around. If you can see this thing screaming hot because we're already getting a good sear on the surface of the meat. Well, the smell is incredible. You can see we've got some caramelization going on from the sugar in the marinade. That's gonna add a great bit of flavor and texture to the outside. All right, so there's no finishing temperature here. It's really looking at texture. You gotta have some great crispiness going on. There shouldn't be any pink or really soft parts left. So once you get there, you just scoop this right off. You can see we've taken this far enough that we've got great caramelization, but we're not scorching everything. And that's right in that sweet spot where you wanna be. Take somewhere between five and 10 minutes, depending on just how hot your griddle is. All right, so we're gonna serve our bulgogi on top of white rice today with some lettuce for lettuce wraps. Let's garnish it up with some of that green onion we sliced earlier. And we're ready to dig in. All right, I'm gonna partake with the lettuce wrap. Get a little bit of kimchi on there. A little more bulgogi on top. Oh my gosh. That is wonderful. That beef just melts in your mouth. It's coated in that marinade, turned into a sauce, reduced down on the griddle. God, I love the funkiness of that kimchi in there. Not too sweet, not too salty, really well balanced and just incredibly tender. So many wonderful flavors working together with so many wonderful textures. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below. And let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.